Hi, everyone. Uh, I am Matt Lamparter. So I am the lab director for the electrical and computer engineering department here at Bucknell. Uh, and in addition to wearing my uh, lab director hat, I also get to wear my makerspace hat. Uh, I run one of three makerspaces on Bucknell's campus. Uh, perhaps you are fortunate in that you have a makerspace in your school, in your community somewhere. Um, or if you don't, uh, no, no worries, because I will go over what a makerspace is as well during my little, my little piece of the presentation here. Um, so that's who I am. Uh, I'm going to let uh, Emily introduce uh, herself here. Hi, everyone. I'm Emily Bayouk. I'll, I'll be a senior in the fall, electrical engineering student with a minor in Russian language. Um, yep. right. I think Matt has a little demo that he's going to be running. Yeah. During so uh, if everyone has your, your chat window open, uh, I just submitted a, a link there. Uh, if you want to go to that to that link, uh, it's going to take you to a website and you're going to have uh, four options there. There are going to be four different images. Uh, they're all Bucknell related things from a, a logo and a crest uh, down to a picture of our uh, Bertrand library. Um, go ahead right now. Uh, chill, take a moment. Go to that. Go to that website. If you can click on the one that you want to vote for and then click vote. Um, and uh, whichever one ends up being most popular. Uh, we will go ahead and we have uh, a thing here in the, the makery, our makerspace, uh, we have a laser cutter that will actually etch and cut that out of a piece of uh, plywood. So we want to go ahead and get that running uh, while we're doing the rest of the presentations so that when we're all done, we can go back and say, hey, here's the winning thing. Um, so go ahead and vote now and I will, I will get that job running uh, and I will, I will let uh, Emily take over while I, while I set that up in the background and then I'll be back to join you in a few minutes. All right, so let me just share my screen really quick. Uh, here we go. All right, so welcome everyone to the ECE portion of the Bucknell Engineering Camp. Here we have a quick little video I'll play for you guys time just to introduce you to the different applications that electrical engineering can create. That kind of just showed some of the applications that we work on, which I'll go more into depth throughout my presentation and talk about what we learn and how it can be applied. So just to start off, before we get into my presentation, I wanted to just get your thoughts on what electrical and computer engineering, what comes to mind when you think of electrical and computer engineering. So if everyone could go on their devices again and go to menti.com, M-E-N-T-I.com, and if you use the code 413113, a screen will pop up and you can answer the question. Emily, can you repeat that code one more time? Or maybe if, if you have the ability, I don't know if you do, um, or I, I can actually put it into the chat for you as well, just so everyone has, has record of that. Oh yeah, that would be awesome, thank you. And it's also um, at the top of the screen. I don't know if you guys can see my mouse moving. Excellent. Thank you. I should also mention if anyone has any questions uh, throughout the, the presentation, by all means, uh, feel free to, to let us know. You can put something in the in the chat if that's uh, easier, and uh, we'll try our best to either answer it, you know, in the in the midst of the of the presentation, or if we have to, we can always circle back at the end and, and address any questions folks have. Um, so definitely, definitely ask questions. That's highly encouraged. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then also feel free to ask questions. Um, about being an engineering student at Bucknell. I'll be happy to answer those as well. All right, so we have a bunch of answers coming in, so I'm gonna unhide, but feel free to keep adding your responses 
even though I am going to show the responses. So. So yep, those are all great robotics, electricity, hardware. Yep, you guys sound like you know a bit about it already. That's awesome. All right, now I'm just gonna switch back to my presentation. Alrighty, and we'll continue. All right, so now I'll talk a little bit about my journey as an electrical engineer at Bucknell. So just a little background, I thought it was something I'm really interested in at Bucknell is trying to inspire young women to get involved in engineering and then specifically electrical engineering. So from these statistics, you can see only about 13% of engineers are women and of electrical engineers, only about 14% of electricals are women. So a little bit going more into my mission as an engineer at Bucknell, I want to inspire young women to be interested in STEM and help close the gender gap. A little bit about me at Bucknell. So we are, I already talked about how I'm a student with a Russian language minor. I'm also an author of The Fundamentals of Circuits Made Easy, which I published about a year ago now, and I'll get more into that later in my presentation. And then at Bucknell, I'm the manager for the men's soccer team. I'm the vice president of the Russian club, and I'm also a student member of the BUAA, which is the Bucknell Alumni Association. So I help bridge the gap between alumni and current students and just help create a bigger, stronger Bucknell community. So what is electrical engineering? From my perspective of what I've learned at Bucknell, it involves skills such as problem solving and teamwork in groups that will help benefit society. Your projects will help benefit society. It's also another skill would be project management in terms of organization, attention to detail and critical thinking. And then things that topics I learn about in my engineering classes, we learn about circuits, systems, signals, and then we also study energy and ways to conserve energy and different methods of power to get power and energy. Um, so now why I chose to become an electrical engineer. So when I was about five, year, five or elementary school, when I was in elementary school, my parents bought me um, a little kit called Snap Circuits Junior. And so that was just like, I don't know if you guys have it, but it's like a little toy puzzle that you put pieces together and you can, um, sorry, um, you put pieces together and like you can make a light bulb light up and alarm sound and stuff like that. So that was like my first introduction to electrical engineering. And then as I got older in high school, I really enjoyed math, physics, and my other science classes just because like I really enjoyed problem solving and I found it super interesting. And then when I was a junior and senior, I took physics in high school and my physics teacher was an electrical engineer and he actually inspired me to become an electrical engineer because I'd always stay after school and like um, learn, I'd ask him to teach me more about circuits. So he was like, oh, like you might be interested in electrical engineering and stuff like that. So that's kind of my introduction to electrical engineering. And then another aspect I liked about engineering as a whole is that engineers help society in general, creating a safer and better quality of life for the people in our planet. Um, so this is just a little, another little summary about my electrical engineering journey. Um, so Going back to talk about my book a little bit, it started when I was in high school. There was this scholarship competition that I participated in, and the scholarship was that you had to create a project to help teach younger students or inspire younger students to become interested in a topic. And so my topic was circuits, um, and I decided to create a book to educate younger kids about circuits because I felt like there wasn't a ton of material out there to learn from. 
um, it was kind of like super hard textbooks in college that you would see and or like the younger kid games like um, Snap Circuits Junior. So I kind of wanted to create something that was in between the super young kids and the college students. So I created my book and it is, I hand wrote and illustrated it kind of, I don't know if you guys are familiar with bullet journaling, but it's just a way to um, kind of illustrate your ideas and stuff in a way that's very easy to understand and kind of categorize things. Um, so I, that was how I based my book off of the, the illustrations of my book I based off of my interest in bullet journaling as well. Um, and then I'll show you a page later in the presentation and I'll show you the book later. Um, but yeah, so that was how I started writing my book. And then I ended up publishing my book. It wasn't until last summer I published it when I did research with one of my engineering professors. They had encouraged me to publish my book just like through Amazon and stuff. Um, and then this summer, I am a machine learning software development engineer at Booz Allen Hamilton. So I've been working on integrating some of their programs into a, a more easily um, viewed, visualized um, platform. So that's what I've been working on. And then after graduation, I want to go into cybersecurity consulting, which I'm super excited about. Um, and this is a little bit more about my book. So kind of my background was the whole uh, scholarship project. And also I wanted to gear my book more towards young girls, um, just because there, uh, there is such a gender gap in electrical engineering as well. Um, so yeah, this is just a little more about my book. And then here's a page of my book and the book cover, which is available on Amazon. Um, and then this page is about ACDC that I chose. And um, as you can see, like the illustrations are kind of, if you guys are familiar with the band ACDC, I reference them. Um, but yeah, that's my book. So thank you and my electrical engineering journey. Uh, if anyone has any questions, feel free to use the chat. Um, yeah, thank you. Awesome. Ah, well, Emily, thank you. Thank you so much for, for sharing all of that. This is, uh, this is the first year that I've gotten the chance to, to do this with someone else. Um, and having Emily's perspective is huge. Pretty much everything she just said reinforces with concrete examples, everything that I want to talk about. So this, this, this just works out so well. So thank you. Thank you so much for, for sharing that, Emily. Um, I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to switch over to my screen here. Uh, let's see. I'm going to share my screen and I want to have a different screen up. Uh, you'd think after how many times I've done Zoom now, I would, I would have this down. Um, let me back out of this for a second here. Okay, there we go. So I want to be over here. And I'm going to move this over here. Okay, now I can share my screen. And I want this one. Okay, great. So can, uh, can everybody, everybody see this? All right. Uh, move this out of the way. There we go. Okay. So, uh, right. Um, I want to talk to everybody about, uh, I want to move other things so I can actually, oh, I didn't share. Sorry. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Um, so, uh, right. I want to talk to you folks about kind of two, two main things. We're here to talk uh, about electrical and computer engineering. Uh, and then at the end, I also want to talk about uh, the maker space that, I, that I'm standing in right now uh, here in the maker. And we will, we will wrap around and do a little tour here at the end of my little, my little part. Um, so let's begin. Let's talk about what electrical and computer engineering, what that, what that is, what that means. Um, so I think some of you probably had, I know I heard Emily uh, or saw Emily doing the, the word cloud there as I was kind of moving to the back. So I think you have some general ideas. I heard something about circuits and electronics. Uh, I heard robotics. Um, you know, Emily was talking about AC and DC. Uh, we've got machine learning. So there's kind of all these, all these different things. Um, and they all fall into the category of electrical and computer engineering. And because that is kind of a mouthful, oftentimes I will abbreviate electrical and computer engineering as ECE. So if you hear me saying ECE, that's what that means. Um, 
So I, I like to think about it in terms of, you know, real people in the world. Um, so in my mind, electrical and computer engineers help people. That's broadly one thing that, that so many of us are doing. Um, and so there's a few examples here, some concrete examples of, of ways that we are helping people. Um, you know, things like prosthetics. We've come a long way since the wooden pirate leg. Um, you know, so, so modern prosthetics uh, aren't, aren't just uh, a static device. Um, these, are, these are devices that interact uh, with the person wearing the device. There are all sorts of sensors built into these things to, to communicate with, uh, with someone's body. There are actuators where people can perhaps control different you know, fingers on an arm joint using uh, you know, impulses from the brain. So these are very complex devices that take a whole team of engineers um, and ECEs play a pretty significant role in this. Um, we've got a picture here of, I believe, a Tesla. So, you know, an electric vehicle, there's going to be all sorts of ECE going into electric vehicles, things from obviously, you know, the, the energy storage and the batteries to the electric drivetrain. There's hundreds, I'm sure, of sensors in these things, all sorts of control systems. You're constantly, uh, you know, sensing the environment around you. You've got uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning with these kind of uh, more and more advanced self-driving features. So there's a ton of ECE going on inside of these vehicles. Um, and then the last two are, again, sort of more um, medical related devices. We have uh, one or two faculty in our department here who do research specifically in the medical field. And so oftentimes you'll see these devices in, in a hospital, uh, you know, anything like pulse ox, uh, heart rate, blood pressure, all sorts of sensors you can outfit a body with to, to keep these, these vital statistics uh, at the fingertips of, of healthcare providers. Um, electrical and computer engineers preserve and sustain our environment. Uh, you know, climate change is, a, is having a huge impact on every aspect of life. Um, and ECEs are some of the folks who are really helping to try to slow and, and combat the, 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 the constant onslaught of climate change. So a few ways that we are working on this are uh, things like uh, sustainable renewable sources of energy. Um, solar panels or photovoltaic panels, uh, that's a big area of research. Uh, we have a faculty member who we'll actually see here in a few slides, uh, who, who one of her research areas uh, is to look at uh, photovoltaic panels. Um, wind turbines, geothermal, uh, there's tidal energy, all sorts of, of sort of clean renewable energy sources that ECEs are helping to, to push and, and you know, drive, that, uh, drive that innovation forward. Um, hybrid and purely electric vehicles, uh, kind of like we talked about there at the last slide. Um, these, you know, these are individually and then globally uh, huge, huge things that ECEs are working on. Um, and then just sort of in general, you know, we, we solve problems, right? This is, this is what engineers do. We solve problems because we want to make the world a better place. Um, you know, that's why I became an engineer. It's why Emily is becoming an engineer. Um, it's what we want to do. It's what drives us. We, we see problems that affect people and we want to fix those things. We want to help make the world a better place. Um, so again, things like robotics, uh, helping to automate tasks that were, you know, previously hazardous or dangerous, um, creating things like drones that can go into uh, dangerous situations. Maybe you're flying into uh, a forest fire to, to get to assess that. Um, so there's, there's all sorts of, of problems and, and things in the world that ECEs want to get in there and, and use our, our technical know-how uh, and our skill set to, to help solve. Um, oh, that's right. And then I, I added this extra slide. Um, and so something that hits a little bit closer to home that's a little more topical um, is that ECEs and makers, people who don't even necessarily have degrees, uh, we help mitigate the effects of a pandemic, a pandemic uh, such as you know, the one we're in the midst of right now. Um, so a lot of people are working on uh, things like ventilators, uh, these machines that help you breathe when you're in a hospital. Um, there are people working on contact tracing methods. You're doing contactless uh, temperature checking. Um, and then right here on Bucknell's campus, uh, our maker spaces back in March and April, uh, when the pandemic was, was first gearing up, we were helping create uh, various forms of PPE, things like face shields uh, and door openers and uh, tents for when, when people are being intubated in hospitals. We were helping uh, produce those items for our local healthcare providers in the community. All right, uh, so I've got a few slides here on, on people whose names you may or may not know. I wanted to do a little bit of uh, 
you know, who's who in the, in the world of ECE. Um, so a lot of people I think know, uh, you know, Thomas Edison's name, uh, the, the name Tesla or perhaps the, the word Tesla means something to folks now because of the electric vehicles. Uh, but the, the, the company gets its name, the, their namesake is Nikola Tesla, uh, who is kind of there at the, the turn of the 20th century. Um, so Tesla first came to this country and he worked for Thomas Edison. Edison was, you know, working on uh, DC uh, current. He invented the light bulb. Uh, Tesla comes along and says, actually, you know, I think there's another way we can do this. We can use this thing called, called alternating current. Um, and so they kind of battle it out as, as Emily alluded to in her book there, the, the, the war of the currents. Um, so Tesla eventually leaves Edison. He goes and works with Edison's competitor, Westinghouse. Um, and in the end, AC kind of wins out at least for, for long distance power transmission. So two of the most uh, important things that Tesla is known for are uh, AC power transmission uh, and then the AC induction motor. This again harkens back to that, that idea of ECEs wanting to help, you know, help the world. Uh, a lot of manual labor was, was done by humans or by animals. It was backbreaking labor. It was dangerous. Uh, along comes Tesla. He invents this, this motor that runs on AC, it runs on electricity. Uh, and this, this you know, helps um, eliminate a lot of safety hazards for folks uh, in various industries. Uh, Lewis Latimer. So I mentioned Edison's name, and we all know Edison kind of invented the, the, the light bulb. Uh, the problem with Edison's original light bulb is that the, the filament, the part in the light bulb that, that glowed and actually emitted the light, uh, was made from paper. And it was made from paper soaked in, in some kind of uh, liquid. Um, but because it was paper, it would burn out pretty quickly. Latimer kind of revolutionized uh, and, and kind of made the, the light bulb far more practical um, because he replaced that paper filament uh, with a carbon filament. And it turns out that carbon uh, will last far, far longer than, than paper. Um, so he patented that along with this other, this other gentleman, Joseph Nichols. Uh, he wrote one of the first books on incandescent lighting. Um, so he was a pretty significant factor in, in contributing to the, the incandescent lighting that again, you know, helped revolutionize things. Prior to that, people were using gas lamps in their houses, uh, which were, they were dirty, they would, you know, they were hazardous. Uh, they emitted all kinds of soot. Um, so that was a, another revolution in the, thanks to ECE. Uh, Hedy Lamarr, uh, primarily known as a Hollywood movie actress. Uh, she was popular kind of just as silent films were kind of uh, phasing out and we were moving into the world of, of talkies, uh, movies with, uh, with uh, dialogue and music and so forth. Um, so that's what she's most well known for. However, she made a pretty significant contribution uh, to the world of ECE. Uh, she and another guy, George Anthill, developed a type of technology called spread spectrum technology which allowed people to transmit information far more uh, securely. Previously, they, they had radio, people had AM radio, which was great because you could broadcast radio to lots of people. Um, but if you had you know, sensitive information, perhaps you're in the military, you don't want the enemy listening to your communications, uh, you don't want to broadcast things on AM radio. You want to be able to send it just to one person. So she and George Anthill developed a scheme uh, that would allow you to do this. Um, and future iterations of this technology are now in many devices that we use today. It's part of Bluetooth, it's part of Wi-Fi, um, so it's, 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 in, it's, it's ubiquitous at this point. Uh, Jerry Lawson, so I don't know if anybody likes to play video games. Uh, Jerry Lawson uh, was a co-creator of the first cartridge-based video game system. Um, a lot of modern video games now are, are different than when I was a kid. Um, where you've got a smartphone or you've got you know a, uh, some sort of device where you just download uh, a game to it. However, back in the day, uh, you would actually stick these these plastic cartridges in a video game system. This is thanks to Jerry Lawson. Uh, he he was working for a company called Fairchild, and they developed the Fairchild Channel F, which stood for fun. Uh, and you can see him in this picture here. He's holding on to this unit and it had these little joysticks. Um, so you can thank Jerry Lawson for, uh, what is it, Candy Crush and all those, all those fun things. Uh, Mae Jemison. Um, Mae Jemison kind of astounds me. You know, she was not only an engineer, she was also a, a physician. She had her medical degree. She was an astronaut. She was a professor. She was an author. And she even, I think, in her later life, opened a dance studio. When she went to college at first, she thought she was getting a degree in, I think, chemical engineering. But her senior year thought, hmm, should I go on and do engineering or should I go and pursue dance professionally? So she was also a dancer. Uh, so May is just kind of incredible in my mind. Um, she was the first black woman to travel into space. Uh, this was in 1987. This is in my lifetime. 
Um, and so I also want to take a moment and just talk about that dance piece uh, uh, because engineers, uh, we, as mentioned, we like to solve problems. Solving problems is just an extension of creativity. So it's not surprising to me that May was also really interested in dance, a creative art form. You find this a lot. There's a lot of overlap between, you know, the, the artistic creative mind and the engineering mind. And really, I think they're one and the same. Um, I can't tell you the number of faculty and staff uh, and students that I work with who aren't just engineers, they're also painters and sculptors, they're musicians, they're dancers, they're theater folks. Almost every engineer I know is also invo involved in some creative pursuit as well. Uh, there's Marion Croak. Uh, she is currently the VP of engineering, or I guess probably one of several VPs of engineering at Google. Uh, her, her big claim to fame is that she developed uh, VOIP, which is voice over internet protocol. Um, it's basically what what let us move beyond our traditional um, uh, telephones that let us communicate over uh, dedicated telephone lines uh, and push the, uh, the telephone communication kind of into the internet world, uh, which is significantly uh, cheaper to implement. Uh, and you've got all sorts of um, uh, quality improvements that go along with that. So our, our modern telephony structure is built around this, this development of VOIP that Marion Croke developed. Um, she also pioneered the donation by text technology. Uh, she, I believe, was consulting for American Idol in the early 2000s, and they had this idea that they wanted people to be able to vote for which contestant they, they liked the most using their cell phones by texting. Uh, so she helped them develop that, but in the back of her mind, she thought, this has broader application. I bet we could use this to, to, to help someone somehow. Well, uh, she got her chance in 2010. There was an earthquake in Haiti, and she had, to, in the meantime, she had developed a, uh, a system where you could use your, uh, your cell phone to text a donation uh, to a charitable organization. So in 2010, she helped kind of pioneer this. And now again, this is a thing that many, many uh, organizations use to, to help raise funds uh, for disaster relief and other charitable uh, uh, issues. Uh, final slide for people. Uh, this is Amal Kabbalan. Amal is a faculty member in our department. Um, she's the one I mentioned has a, an interest in photovoltaics and materials. Uh, she, like so many engineers, uh, also has an emphasis on social justice and humanitarian efforts. Um, Amal, prior, even prior to uh, the, the pandemic, was working on a, a device um, that is an electrical sensor uh, and it helps, um, I'm going to read actually right off the slide here because I didn't know about this until I got an email earlier in the week. Uh, it's, she developed an electrical sensor that could nearly instantly diagnose uh, a back, oop, no, oh boy, I'm going, going the wrong way, um, uh, nearly instantly diagnose a bacterial upper respiratory infection, uh, which affects, you know, several million people uh, in, in the U.S. every year. Um, so I like to highlight Amal because she's right here in, in our very own department here at Bucknell. Um, so uh, I want to show you folks uh, a few a few fun examples of uh, stuff that that ECEs do or things that are related to ECEs. Um, there, so I'm, I think I'm actually going to skip these videos. I see, as I predicted, I'm I'm going far longer than I thought I would. Um, so there, these videos, basically in a nutshell, are talking about um, a device called the gravity light. And so the gravity light was this idea that uh, some folks came up with that um, there were you know, a lot of people around the world uh, and in impoverished countries um, that when the sun goes down, you know, that's that's it. There's 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 no electricity in these rural remote areas. Uh, and so to, to get light to, to keep doing any work or things you need to do at night, uh, people would burn kerosene and kerosene lamps. Um, but again, it's 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 a it's a dirty way to do things. It's dangerous. Um, so they were they were looking for a way that rather than having to run electrical wires everywhere, uh, they could have electricity on the spot. Uh, have it be in a robust package, an inexpensive thing. And so the gravity light was born. The basic idea here is that you've got this little box called the gravity light. You hook a bag, you, it's got a little bag, you hook the bag up to it, you stick stuff in the bag, whatever's around, rocks, dirt, sticks to stuff in the bag. The bag is heavy and now it very slowly descends. If you hang it up at, I don't know, five feet perhaps, it takes maybe 20 minutes to descend. Uh, and the whole time that it's, it's moving, there is a generator in here and that generator is spinning and a spinning generator uh, can generate electricity. Um, and so then this can, can uh, light lights. Um, and so that was the gravity light, uh, which kind of took off. Uh, a big thing in engineering design is the concept of iteration. You don't just design something and say, okay, good, it's done. Uh, you kind of do a first pass and you say, okay, did it do what we want it to do? 
well, not really. What was wrong? Okay, let's do it again. Let's fix those things. And so there's this concept of, of iteration of doing something, checking it, seeing what's wrong, doing it again, checking it, seeing what, and so it's constant improvement. And so the gravity light then went on to become the now light, which is even more functionality. I think is higher efficient. Um, you can now charge a cell phone on it. So that's another big thing. There's no infrastructure oftentimes in third world countries uh, for communications. It's far easier just to put up a few cell phone towers. Um, and so now people can charge their phones as well. So that's what this slide was about. Uh, but it brings me to my first demo. So I'm going to talk for a minute or two here about how this is going to work. And then I'm actually going to switch uh, to my phone and I'll carry the phone around and I'll kind of show you how this demo works. So the basic idea behind uh, these gravity lights, uh, there's a generator in there. And a generator and a motor are really the same thing. It's just they run in different directions. Uh, the, the concept that's key to these, these motors and generators is called electromagnetism. And it turns out that electricity and magnetism are so closely, closely related that they're really, we, we can't talk about one without the other. So we call this concept electromagnetism. Um, the, the way that, uh, that this works, and so if you look in this diagram I've got on my screen here, uh, on the, if you look on the left, uh, you can see the N and the S there and those kind of two, two rectangles. Those are two magnets. And there's a North Pole and a South Pole on each of those magnets. And that sets up something called a magnetic field that kind of goes from the North to the South. The thing in between the two there, so we've got this, this solid black line, which is, is called the shaft. And then around that, there's this, this coil of wire uh, and the coil of wire comes out to these, these commuter things, commutators. Uh, and then you can see there are these two uh, little terminals there that say DC and there's a plus and a minus. And so uh, if you rotate that coil of wire through this magnetic field because of this electromagnetism, it turns out you can generate um, a, a voltage. Um, so you've just got a, a basic magnetic field. You've got these two permanent magnets. And if you take a coil of wire and move it through these mag this magnetic field, you can generate electricity. Um, and so this is how most generators work. Uh, if you open up a, a motor or a generator, you're going to see uh, either permanent magnets, or if you get beyond a certain size, they're going to have electromagnets. Uh, but you've got basically magnets in there that are fixed, that don't change. Uh, and then you have just coils of wire that spin around. And as you spin these coils of wire around, uh, because this, this, this physical concept of electromagnetism, you can produce uh, a voltage. And if you complete the circuit there at the plus and the minus, and you put some kind of thing across that, for example, a light, current will flow through a completed circuit and your light lights up purely by moving this thing. So that's the concept behind how um, behind how our, uh, our gravity light, uh, how our generator works. Um, I'm going to go ahead here and I'm going to show you this in person now. Um, the one thing I will point out on this slide is if you look on the right here, you can see all these kind of these little, um, these waveforms kind of going up and down these little bumps. Um, the, on the, the vertical axis there, the thing that says E, that is your voltage. And then on the, the horizontal axis there, that is time. So you can see if you start on the left and you move to the right, you can see voltage on the red kind of goes up. And then the voltage of the red kind of comes down. But in the meantime, you've got this blue voltage that's kind of doing something different. We call that out of phase. Things aren't in line. They're slightly out of phase. And so the green on top there is kind of the sum of the two. Those two different voltages are because uh, you have two different uh, loops of wire. There's a coil of wire in there like this. And there's one kind of perpendicular to it like this. And so as those two loops spin together, we get two waveforms, two voltage waveforms, and that's the green you see on top. So I have a device over here that's going to show us that. So let me let me log in here with my phone, and I will I will show everybody how this works. Uh, and I might skip my second demo just because I see we we're running a little short on time, and I want to make sure that we get to doing the makerspace tour as well. All right. All right. I'm going to stop sharing the screen. Oh, boy. All right. Uh, here we go. OK. Uh, so how do I get back to leading this? All right. Can everyone see this OK? Give me a nod if you can see the second video. OK, good. All right. So uh, we are going to wander over this way. Uh, 
Um, all right. Uh, you know what? I'm going to skip this just because I'm worried it's not going to. I'm not. It's not going to work. We're going to. We're going to skip this demo. Um, I'm going to head back here to the slides, and I think we might just do the tour. Um, sorry. I was hoping this part would work, but I think I think it'll be better off if we. Uh, if we just stick to the to the tour instead, um, okay. So, what was my next what was my next slide here? Uh, right. Um, so the second demo I had for you, actually, this one I can probably do just holding on to to uh, the the camera. I can I can show you this one. Um, so uh, the 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 concept with this one is that in addition to motion creating electricity. Uh, you can also have uh, an electrochemical uh, reaction uh, create electricity. So I've got here a little stack of uh, copper pennies and uh, zinc washers, and they are separated between between each of those pairs of copper and zinc are, are these pieces of um, uh, paper towel that I have soaked in a solution of uh, salt water. And so if, uh, if we hook up a little light across these things, it turns out they form a battery and there we go. We can get this little light to light up uh, simply by connecting them across a stack of batteries and washers. Um, there's an electrochemical reaction going on inside of there uh, that, that generates um, uh, different ions and then the motion of uh, the electrons through that, uh, through those metals uh, is what gives us our electric current that completes the circuit that you see in that picture there and causes our light to, uh, to light up. Okay. Uh, for the last few minutes here, I'm going to talk about a makerspace. Um, makerspaces, you don't have to be an engineer. Engineers can use makerspaces, but they're not exclusive. Makerspaces are for everyone. So it's a lot of fun. I see a lot of folks in here who are engineers. I also see a lot of folks who are not engineers. I have folks in here from our, our health and safety department. I have folks in here from uh, our custodial staff. I have English majors in here. I have all sorts of people coming into our makerspace. Uh, so making is a big part of a makerspace. You know, it's in the name. So you come in, you learn how to make things. Uh, but an even bigger part, I would argue, is community. Makerspaces are all about community. So we very much uh, encourage people to come into makerspaces. You can hang out. You can meet other like-minded people. Uh, and in the process, maybe you get to do some 3D printing and some laser cutting. Um, all right. Uh, now I am going to stop sharing my screen, and I think my phone will work uh, better for the tour part. I think that will that should go a little bit better than my, my last foray into, into this world. Um, so let me stop sharing my screen here. And now I'm going to switch over and let's see today there's engineering camp and I'm going to join. Okay. Okay. Now I believe you can hear me. Uh, I'm gonna hope that you can see my video. Uh, let's see. Nope, nope. I gotta turn my video on. There it is. Okay, great. Uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and I will take you through. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. Good. Yes, yes, Matt. Yes. Matt, can I interrupt for just for one second and just give a quick uh, Zoom tip to some people? Um, I know my default setting is I have like the 25 different squares on my screen. There is a choice up in the corner to choose speaker view. Um, if your setting is like that, anyone else that's, that, that's here? And if you click on the speaker view, it will make um, whoever is speaking the, the prominent video. So in this case, it'll be Matt. Um, and his video will be up there so you can see what he's showing you a little bit better. Um, so I just wanted to jump in with that. Now it's back to you, Matt. All right. Uh, so really quickly, this is something that folks made in our makerspace. This is a cheapo IKEA table. People put a little computer in here called a Raspberry Pi and a, and a screen. And now we've got a little, uh, you know, arcade game. So I can control, uh, you know, do various games, run through here. So this was a fun little thing that came out of our makerspace. Uh, moving around to the back here. Uh, so one of the things that we've got is we've got a vinyl cutter. So a vinyl cutter will create stickers. Uh, so here you can see I made a nice little Bucknell University sticker. Uh, we've got several 3D printers. So I've got a 3D printer running here right now. And we'll just take a look here. We're printing a nice little 
nice little Bucknell bee. Uh, so we've got several 3D printers going in the makery. It's gonna get loud, so I apologize back here. I'll try to speak up so you can hear me over the noise. Uh, let's take a look here at our laser cutter. Uh, this is uh, what you folks were voting on. So it looks like the Bucknell Bison won, and we are nearly done with that. Hopefully here in the next minute or two, that'll finish up. I can pull that out. Over this way, we have something called a printed circuit board mill. So if anyone has ever uh, seen one of these these green things that are in all your electronic devices, these printed circuit boards, we can make those right here at Bucknell. So these are some Bucknell B printed circuit boards that I'm working on. Uh, these will have LEDs in them that will light up. Um, so we can, we can create those right here at Bucknell. Uh, this is another project that unfortunately I probably won't have time to, to set up and run here. Uh, but if folks wanna hang around the end and you're interested, I will be happy to come back and show this off. Um, this box was made here in the makery. Uh, it's got a lot of uh, mechanical doodads on it. Uh, we can take the, there's a, there's a microphone inside. We can take the microphone out. It goes through this fun little pedal here. Uh, this is a guitar effect pedal. And if anyone watched uh, the video before the session here on signal processing, there's some signal processing that goes on there. And then it goes through a little amplifier. So you get all kinds of crazy space age sounds out of this thing. And then finally, uh, pretty, pretty low tech, but fun. Uh, we've got a nice little button maker here so we can make all kinds of, uh, all kinds of buttons in the makery as well. Um, so I think that pretty much concludes everything that I wanted to, to show here in the makery. Um, I'm gonna wander back up front here and, and move back to the computer. Uh, I think we're, we're pretty good on time. Um, so that's, that's officially all I had here. Um, so if anybody has, has questions. Uh, I am. I'm happy to answer questions. Emily and I are both here. There we go. Okay. So now I'm now I'm back to a single camera. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much all I've I've got. Like I said, I have a handful of things I didn't quite uh, quite squeeze in. So if folks are interested in seeing other things light up, I can do the uh, I can do the the generator demo. Uh, I'm happy to to plug in that. Um, that little box I was showing you that makes all kinds of crazy noises. Uh, I can show you my, uh, my Bucknell B uh, things that light up that were made here in the makery. So there's all sorts of other things that I'm happy to talk about. Or if you folks have questions, I'm happy to answer any of those as well, along with Emily. And I guess I should look in the-, in the well, chat uh, Some here. of the, the campers are- Keeping an eye on that. Matt, maybe well, some of the campers are coming up with some questions. Um, ah, so Anna, why is the job outlook for electrical engineers so low? So that's a that's a good question. Um, so you know, it's there is there is a national trend, right, for for electrical and computer engineers, and this is this is something that uh, that we've talked about internally in in our own department here at Bucknell. Um, it's something that, that's come up. There's, a, there's a, an organization called um, ACETA, the Electrical and Computer Engineering Department Heads Association, uh, that I'm, I'm a member of. I'm not a department head, but I've, I've gone to this meeting, this conference, and um, this is something great that there, people are paying attention to nationally. Um, I'm not sure that I can say, I can pinpoint, you know, one specific reason that, that the, you know, the numbers are um, low at the moment. I, I think, you know, in some sense, I think that we as, as electrical and computer engineers have almost done too good a job at putting things inside of a, inside of a box, right? I mean, you know, the iPhone, the smartphone is ubiquitous, right? Everyone's got a smartphone. But if you ask anybody how it works, no one knows how they work. You know, the internet is everywhere. Everyone uses the internet. No one knows how the internet works. I mean, you know, obviously there are people who do know how the internet works, but in, in general, um, I think a lot of things like mechanical engineering, you know, you can see things moving, you know, that, that kind of makes sense to people and, and um, you know, chemical engineering, you can, you can see big industrial chemical processes happening. Um, electrical and computer engineering, so much of our stuff has become so small and it's, it's so conceptual that I think oftentimes people who would have an interest in electrical and computer engineering perhaps don't even realize that's necessarily it falls under under the purview of electrical and computer engineering. Um, so it's, it's kind of a roundabout answer. Like I said, I, I don't have a, a good answer for you. Um, but that's, that's my take on it that the you know, there is a lot of things 
there are a lot of things in my mind that electrical and computer engineers do. In fact, I think it would be hard pressed to find any kind of industry that don't use ECEs in some capacity. Um, I think it's perhaps just, it's harder to, to pinpoint for a lot of folks that that is an, an ECE type thing. We're almost more of like a, a service industry where we kind of offer our services to everyone else at this point. Yeah, then kind of go right, so let's see, what else do we have here? How can I start with tinkering with electric stuff at home? Uh, well, let's see, Emily, I feel like this might be right up your alley. I'm gonna let you field this one. Yeah, so like at home, when I was little, I did um, Snap Circus Junior. Um, but also just like taking apart, I remember when I was younger, I like took apart my, I had a like old rotary telephone that I took apart and like you can see the circuit board in that. And in terms of like programming stuff, I think there's open source websites that you can like start programming on and kind of get a sense for programming in Python and stuff like that. In terms of electronic stuff too, like Raspberry Pi, Matt had talked about a little bit um, and stuff like that would be good. Um, and then also just going off of the last question, in the first question in terms of visualizing electrical engineering concepts, I think what Matt was saying is really true. Like it's, I think a lot of people find electrical and computer engineering intimidating because you can't visualize it like you can with the other engineering disciplines. Um, and that's kind of what I was trying to help with in my book as well, like drawing diagrams and um, creating analogies between concepts in electrical engineering that you can't really see to um, concepts that you can see like um, voltage and current. I can relate to something like um, water flow is a common analogy that you'll hear in electrical and computer engineering. Yeah, and so I guess just to, to follow up on what Emily was saying uh, on her at, at home stuff, um, take stuff apart. Um, you know, if your parents will let you, take stuff apart that's working and then hoping you put it back together. If you're not quite so fortunate, look for broken stuff. I can't tell you the number of times. I mean, I still do this. Uh, you know, if I if I see something that someone is you know throwing out, or maybe I see something on Craigslist and I know it's it's broken, I'll think, oh, that maybe I could fix that, or oh, you know, at this point, if if you're if you're just starting out, like just take things apart. If they are broken, that's great, because if something's already broken, you're not going to break it any farther. Uh, it already doesn't work. So I really just taking things apart. Now, you know, a lot of things are going to be difficult. Uh, you know, if you're taking apart, you know, uh, a smartphone maybe or like an Xbox, a lot. A lot of that is going to be right these these printed circuit boards with tiny little parts and that's that's going to be somewhat hard to, to conceptualize um but you know start small um there's a lot of a lot of information out there you know youtube is your friend uh websites like uh instructables uh hackaday um uh hackster.io there's a lot of resources out there which uh, i'm happy to, to put maybe i put some of these links in the in the chat so folks can check these out um, but the internet is a great resource for so many things and, you know, electronics tinkering is, is a, is a, is a great avenue. Uh, the internet is a great avenue for, for entry into that world. 